Hey there folks, welcome to Sales Tech Talks. Today we're going to be checking out Vidyard. Wow. Vidyard is a software that allows you to easily record videos and send them to your sales prospects. Typically on Sales Tech Talks, I'll look at tools I haven't used before. I'll go through them and review the experience and say if I like it or not. The thing is, I've used Vidyard a lot. I work for Vidyard. And secondly, even before I worked at this company, I was a power user of Vidyard. As an account executive, I was always sending videos to my prospects, follow-ups, recaps, handovers, short demos, and proposal reviews. So I can't exactly exactly share my experience of using the tool for the first time with you today. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the tool and highlight some of the features that I probably would like if I was using this for the first time, but also show you some cool things that a lot of people don't know about the tool that can help you send more engaging videos, book more meetings, and keep your prospects watching. I almost forgot. Before we jump in, there is something that we need to clear up. Vidyard. Not Vidyard. I'm saying it wrong. It's Vidyard. Vidyard. For today's Vidyard episode, I'm going to be using the free trial of the pro plan and a lot of the stuff will transfer over to the free plan as well. If you stick around till the end of the video, we'll give you a promo code for 90 days of free Vidyard Pro. All right, so now that we're in Vidyard, we're going to jump straight into recording a video. For this, we are given a few different options. First of all, if we're in the tool, we can use this new button in the top right hand corner and then record a video or upload one from our computer. If we jump onto recording a video on the platform, you'll see I'm in two places right now. Hey, hey, we're presented with a few options. We can use our camera or we can share our screen. There's also some cheeky other features. For example, you can adjust to low light. So if you don't have great studio lighting like I do and you're sat in a dark room, but you don't want to look too dark, then you can just crank up your light there. And as you can see, I'm getting brighter and darker. You can mirror your camera. So depending on how you want it to look for your prospects, do you want the words to be backwards, especially if you're gonna be holding like a whiteboard or a sign, you gotta make sure that's mirrored so that they can see what you want them to see, not what you can see, if that all makes sense. And the last thing you can see here is uh, enable light recording. And the reason you might wanna use this is if you have a computer with low processing power, which may slow down performance. So if you have a rubbish computer or bad internet, I highly recommend checking that box. So that's the first option that you have for recording. The second option is using the Chrome browser extension. If I jump onto Tyler's LinkedIn profile, I can use the Chrome extension in the top right here, and that will allow me to record my screen and show my little circle here in the corner. You can also record your screen on its own, and you can also just record a normal video like we showed before. Now, if we're gonna record our screen, then there's a couple of other cheeky things we might notice here. For example, in the bottom left, you can see I've added a little title card. So I've put my name and my title. We can also change the color of this to match closer to our company branding. Green looks pretty good to me. And then the third option for recording is using the desktop app. And this one works uh, pretty much the exact same way as the one the browser does. For this example video though, we'll use the Chrome extension one and uh, we'll just do a random video about Tyler, pretend we're trying to sell him, let's say some media sponsorships. So I choose which screen I wanna share and begin sharing. And I'm gonna record Tyler, like an example video that I might send to a prospect. Uh, so it might sound like this. Hey, Tyler, I spotted that you and the sales feed team got together for an on-site meeting last week. I hope you had fun. A lot of the times when I see marketing teams get together for a meeting like that, promotion and reach is something that's almost always discussed. I'm curious, have you ever considered paid partnerships for sales feed in the past? Okay, and at this point, I'm gonna stop for a second. One thing I wanna highlight is at any point on the video, you can press the pause button. So if you know you wanna get one piece out, I'm gonna chunk it up a little bit and switch tabs or go on to the next sentence of what you wanna say about thinking about it, use the pause button. If you do mess up, you can always restart the video. But a big mistake I see sellers making while they're making these videos is that they'll keep restarting them over and over again. It's okay to stutter or mess up, and I'll show you a couple of ways you can fix that after you're done with the video. Now, another feature I don't see people using is the notes tool. So once again, if you wanna pause and check your notes. The other thing is the pen tool. Uh, this can add like an extra visual dynamic to your, your video, especially for demos and presentations that you're recording. One other thing you can do is also expand your camera, put yourself full screen. So I'm gonna purposely mess up when I continue recording here and show you how you might be able to fix that. I'm curious though, have you ever considered paid partnerships in the past? We've worked with a lot of sales companies, oh, sales tech companies in the past and helped them get a lot more reach in the sales community. Let me know if this is something that's interesting to you by just dropping your response to that email I just sent you. Cheers and stop.
So there we go. We just recorded a quick video there. Straight away, it allows us to title that video and we can copy the link. We're not gonna do that because we wanna make some edits to this video before we shoot that off. So we click the edit video button and that's gonna open up a new Vidyard tab. So the first thing we're gonna change is the name. This is something that's customer facing. I'm gonna make this something that's gonna catch Tyler's eye like uh, sales feed on site. He's gonna want to think, what is this about? when he sees that title. The next thing I can do is trim. And when I messed up in the video, this is how you can actually fix this. And what this allows you to do is cut time off the start of your video and the end of your video. So if you ended it awkwardly or you took a few seconds to start talking, you can just trim those two things to make sure it's nice and clean. If you did make a mistake halfway through the video like I did, you can go ahead and find that mistake. I think I made a mistake here. I can then go ahead and split and then go ahead to the end of the mistake until I start talking again and split again. I can then delete that little mistake from the middle of my clip without having to re-record the whole video. It's a massive time saver. Once you're done, you can save. At this point, we can now choose a thumbnail. So you have a few options with thumbnails. Have a static thumbnail. That's just gonna be the first frame of your video. An animated thumbnail, which will turn your thumbnail into a GIF. And that's gonna be the first three seconds of your video. And the last thing you can do is select the thumbnail from your video here, and then select that to be my animated thumbnail. So we've trimmed the video, we've added the thumbnail. The last thing we might wanna do is use chapters. You can break the video down, so if the prospect wants to skip to the part that's most relevant to them, they can do just that. You're mainly gonna to wanna to do this for demos or slightly longer videos so that people can skip ahead if they think it's more relevant. Intro, demo, next step. And now when we go back to the edit page, we can see those chapters have been added onto the video timeline so people can skip ahead if they want to. All right, so we did the video. Now it's time to shoot this video off to Tyler or your prospect. You get a few different options for this. The first one is on the right here. You can send an email directly to tyler.lessard at vidyard.com. The second option is copying the link or copying the link and thumbnail in the top right here. And I can just paste that straight into the email there and shoot that off to him. Now another option, if you can see this little Vidyard icon here on the email, if you have the Chrome browser extension installed, you click on this and that will allow you to select any video from your library to include in the email. Now a third option for sending this to Tyler is if we jump back onto Tyler's LinkedIn and hit the message button, as long as you have the Chrome extension installed, you're able to use the Vidyard button here on the bottom of this. And then once again, select any video from your library and share that directly in LinkedIn. That's gonna include a thumbnail in that message as well. If you have already recorded that video, then it might just be easier to ping it to them on LinkedIn, especially if you know that they didn't open it the first time you sent it to them. Now, if you're using the Vidyard free plan and Tyler opens that link, this is what he's gonna see. I've got the video here. If you're using the pro plan or the pro trial, then what you're able to do is customize that page to match your brand. It allows you to add a call to action to the page as well as the ability for the prospect to comment on the video as well. Now, if we skip to the end of this video, we'll see that you can also add a link or call to action to end of the video as well. And that can be to anywhere. It could be to your website, it could be to a resource, your LinkedIn profile, or as you can see here, a calendar link so that Tyler or the prospect can book some time with you. When the video first gets opened, you're gonna get a notification via email letting you know that someone has opened your video. If you're using the pro plan, you can go a little bit further than that and get some analytics on the video. Here's what that looks like. You can see how many times the page has been opened, how many times people have hit the play button on the video, and you can see individual sessions and watch times for different people. You're also able to see how many times an action, one of those call to actions was clicked. Those analytics are super helpful and uh, they're part of the pro plan. I mentioned before that that has a 14 day free trial. For the people who stuck around right until the end of this video, I'm gonna hook you up with a cheeky little code so you can extend that trial period. If you sign up for Vidyard free and then go to upgrade your plan to pro, at checkout, enter this code, which will give you 90 days of Vidyard Pro for free. And you wanna make sure that you have the monthly billing selected because otherwise the code won't work. And that'll give you three months, 90 days of free Vidyard Pro. I've left the link in the bio so that you can go sign up for Vidyard, use that free code and check out the platform for yourself if you're not already using it. If you are already using it, I hope this video was helpful for you. You learned some new tips and tricks while using Vidyard and some features that you may not have known about. If you have any questions about video best practices or how to use the platform deeper, then please do drop a comment on this video. Even if you don't drop a comment, then please do drop a like and make sure to subscribe to Sales Feed on YouTube. It helps us a whole bunch. Thanks so much for sticking around. I'll see you next time on Sales Tech Talks.
Thank you again for checking out the video. If there is a tool that you would like me to check out on the next episode of Sales Tech Talks, then please do let me know. I'm running out of ideas.